So some people call them gaffes, some others call them slips of the tongue, stepping in it, whatever you want to call it. The candidates have been wandering off the trail into some troubled waters lately, actually a lot lately. But when is a gaffe more than just a gaffe? Here to talk about it, political comedian and founder of the blog, thedeansreport.com, Dean Ovadella, and Republican strategist Lenny McAllister. I have been reading your stuff, giggling away, Dean. Lenny, I always think political with you, but you're going to have to step it up a notch if you're going to be beside <laughs> this guy. And I want to start know, with the whole the whole BS part of the day. Let's start with Rick Santorum. He had some pretty fiery rhetoric uh, uh, when it comes to his rival, Mitt Romney. Have a listen to this first part of what he had to say about Mitt. Why would we put someone up who is uniquely, pick any other Republican in the country? He is the worst Republican in the country to put up against Barack Obama. Why would Wisconsin want to vote for someone like that? He is the worst Republican in the country to put up against Barack Obama. He was asked about that comment and actually it was quoted verbatim by a New York Times reporter but Santorum wasn't having any of it. He lost his cool. He dropped the BS word. Have a look. Do you think he's the worst Republican to, to run, run against Barack Obama on the issue of health care because he, he fashioned the blueprint? I've been saying it in every speech. Quit distorting my words. If I see it, it's bull****. Come on, man. What are you doing? Come on, man, cameras are rolling. Santorum was sticking by those words today, guys. Uh, you know, he said any Republican worth his salt shouldn't be afraid to take on a New York Times reporter. But guys, taking on a New York Times reporter who is actually quoting him verbatim, is this gonna be troublesome? Dean, start with you. I think that's not even a gap. That's called desperate. It looked like a scene from Jersey Shore. That was unbelievable. <laughs> Them yelling at it, having to be believed the guy's running for president. But this is my point, though. There's a difference between gaffes, which are mistakes, and if you say something wrong, you remember President Obama said I ran in 57 states, or President Bush, of course, was amazing, saying things said like Al Qaeda, Al Qaeda, turning into a Middle East from a Middle East terrorist group to a Mexican restaurant. Those are gaffes. Those are mistakes. These are rare insights and glimpses into the character of the candidate, and also an unfiltered view of their view of the issues, which in today's world with focus groups and everything being sanitized, you don't ever see this. So I think we should actually savor this, people in the media and American voters, and say, this is really what the candidate's about. Let's take a look at the politician through a picture, a portrait painted by their gaffes. All right, so Lenny, I'm going to see Dean's situation, and I'm going to raise you a snooky. What do you think about this one? Jersey Shore, what? Oh, it's a little bit of Jersey Shore, but you, you are seeing a little bit into what Rick Santorum is all about. I mean, he also talked about bowling a turkey. He's looking to possibly be the bowler chief, at least in Wisconsin. He wants to be able to connect with people. And let's be clear, Senator Santorum is the anti-establishment candidate. So in that regard, he's doing a little bit of rage against the machine, showing a little <laughs> bit of the common man saying, listen, I'm going against the elitist New York Times. So he's, he, you know, he didn't do it intentionally, but he's going to try to spin it that way. Listen, the establishment's against us. Fox News is against us. The Republican establishment is against us. I'm for the common people. We had um, Governor Sununu sit there and say that everybody that's significant is going for Mitt Romney. What did Senator Santorum do? He's already spun that into, well, I guess the insignificant voters of America see it a little differently in states including Louisiana. So yes, it gives a glimpse into what Rick Santorum is saying, being the anti-establishment candidate. Now, should he have said the BS word? No, I but it gives you a glimpse as to what he's going after. I love that you used Rage Against the Machine when describing a guy in a sweater vest. <laughs> let me move on. Let me move on. Got another really hot mic moment today. This one was great. It's really fun when you watch it sort of play out in real time. President Obama this morning was uh, speaking with Russia's outgoing president, Dmitry, and I'm going to do my best Russian accent here, Dmitry Medvedev. So have a listen what the two of them were talking about as reporters were filtering into the room, but the mics were still hot. My last one, please. Yeah. And this After my election, I have more flexibility. Yeah. Yeah. And this time, I transmit this information to Vladimir and the Whoosh. After the election, I have more flexibility. The truth of the matter is, isn't this the kind of conversation that happens all the time, Dean? 
It, it probably does, and we don't hear it. But I can tell you this, the Republican candidate who runs against him is going to use these words after the election on more flexibility to inspire his base to say, look, if we didn't like what he did for the first four years, wait till he has more flexibility in the second term. So this is going to actually be used, I think, really using a campaign ad against him. And it really is. This one really is a blunder by President Obama. And it does show a little bit of insight into what he's thinking. It's real politics on parade for all of us. A man saying, I'd like to do more in the pistol, missile defense, but I can't do it until after an election. I so what do, you think, what, what do you think, Lenny? Is that a, is a major league a-hole moment, or is it a lot less than that? <laughs> Well, I think initially for a Canadian-American, that was pretty good Russian accent on your behalf, Ashley, in regards to oh, what President spasibo. Obama... Spasibo. <laughs> spasibo uh, You're going in a place I'm not going to be able to go. Now, with when we <laughs> start going back to President Obama... <laughs> See, go exactly. Ahead. When it goes to President Obama with this situation, this...